The Fertilizer Use Act was signed into law so that everyone, including residential homeowners, can do their part in saving the Chesapeake Bay. This form will let you know how to measure your lawn, find out what's in your fertilizer, and how to make your application rates so that you can reduce your nutrient use and make sure that your turf is still healthy enough to keep your lawn green and keep the Chesapeake Bay clean. When you're going to go ahead and put fertilizer on your lawn, you do really want to know what is in your soil. And you can't just guess. So what you need to do is take a soil test. That is not a difficult thing. All you need to do is have a shovel. And it's always good to have a plastic uh, container. It doesn't have to be a pail. It can be any kind of plastic container. The reason why you want to use a plastic container is that your shovel is metal, and metal against metal would be bad. The other thing you need to do is, is have some type of uh, container to put the soil back in. This is one of the, uh, the lawn sample bags that we have available, but a plain old baggie would work just fine too. So what you do is you find a nice spot in the lawn, you step into it, there you go, and then you get a sample of soil. Now, your sample of soil only has to be maybe about two to three inches deep, just something like that, and you just put this in the container. The first thing you want to do, though, is you want to make sure that you don't have the grass here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the lawn and take the grass off. Um, by taking the grass off, you're taking off all the uh, um, organic matter on it. So what you're doing instead is you're just getting an actual soil sample. Normally, you'd want to take about 10 to 15 soil samples. Since this is just for demonstration, we're only going to do a couple. And like I said, you don't have to go that deep. You're, you want to get as deep as you can for the roots. But three to four inches would probably be fine. So again, well, I'll take this off. There you go. And then you put all your samples in the, in the bucket and you stir them up. And you can use your shovel for that. And you mix it all together. And then you get your soil sample bag. And you put about a cup of the soil into the bag. Label it so you know where you got it. Like for instance, if you're doing more than your front yard, if you're doing your front yard and backyard, you might want to go ahead and label them front yard and backyard. If you're doing your neighbor's yard, make sure they pay for it. And uh, label it neighbor's yard. So you just go ahead and, and fill this up to about uh, a cup. It's a good idea if your soil is wet to put it on some newspaper and let it dry overnight. Um, the reason why you'd want to do that is, first of all, wet soil is heavier, dry soil's lighter, it's cheaper, and you don't have to wait for it to dry when it gets to the lab. If you have an email address, you'll get the information from the lab within two to three days. Perfect. And at that point, you can go ahead and see how much fertilizer and how much lime you need to add to make your soil, uh, your lawn look perfect. So now you have your soil sample and you're wondering where you're supposed to send it. University of Maryland Extension with Home and Garden Information Center has a wonderful website that will give you all the information of the different varieties of soil test labs that are available for Maryland residents to use. It's all you have to do. Find the one that you want, send it off. These are examples of some typical homeowner style fertilizer applicators. They're traditional drop spreader and a cyclone or a broadcast spreader that is utilized to apply lawn fertilizers. After we've done our soil test and we know what we'd like to apply, we purchase a commercial fertilizer. This is a phosphorus free or a phosphate free. The middle number is zero. So what I've done is I've taken this product and I've equally distributed it into two different uh, buckets. So I have half in each bucket. And by doing that, I'm going to then uh, look at what the size of my yard is. The fertilizer bag provides me a very nice model explanation on how I can determine how many thousand square foot of my yard, and then that'll tell me how much fertilizer I have to apply. Uh, I am also provided settings for my individual fertilizer spreaders. This spreader is designed to have a four setting, so I would turn the dial to the number four. I would make sure the gate is closed prior to loading it with the fertilizer. Uh, then I would fill the hopper with the fertilizer, and I would go into my pre-marked area, which is going to uh, help me determine whether my uh, calibration is about right. The calibration would be the setting that they provided me 
versus how much is actually going out on the lawn. When applying fertilizer, it's very important to determine the effective swath width. And what this allows us to do is look at how far the fertilizer particles are thrown from the broadcast spreader. In the professional industry, we most often spread wheel track to wheel track. So my first pass down is fine. My second pass, I want the fertilizer particles coming out of the spreader to be thrown to the last set of wheel tracks, the outside wheel track, and that means I'm gonna have a nice even coverage. Go ahead and spread, and I would have that pre-measured area, and then I would know whether I was over applying, under applying, or hopefully being right on target so that I'm getting the appropriate amount of nitrogen onto the lawn so I end up with a nice green lawn that's gonna be healthy, but I'm not fertilizing the Chesapeake Bay.